Good evening, America. Mike Morini. Um, coming to you this evening uh, to talk to you about kind of um, not such a happy topic. Uh, I, yet again, have to talk about veteran suicide. Now, you know, I, I, I don't want to get too into the politics of this because I don't want to feel like I'm using this of all things to further my political aspirations. Um, but, you know, I have my platform here. I have my, you know, under 200 subscribers uh, that I can reach out to and kind of discuss this. Um, if you've seen some of my other videos, this isn't the first time I've had a friend commit suicide. Uh, I've had several that over the last um, two or three years, I've been making videos, um, you know, a couple of friends have committed suicide, a couple of fellow soldiers, a couple of civilians here and there, um, and I, uh, you know, used a little bit of that gallows humor uh, one of my other videos where I said it must be suicide season, so yet again I am faced with someone who I served with has committed suicide. Um, and on that note, I also have uh, one of my good friends, one of my, my battle buddies who served with me in Iraq, and you know, I, I lost contact with him for a, a while. Um, but then we reconnected, actually, you know, I transferred back to that unit, and he also transferred back to that unit. He's a really good dude, highly intelligent, but I see him kind of going down a dark road, and I am concerned that he's going to end up there. He went through some hard times. Afghanistan, the fall of Afghanistan, was particularly hard for him, um, as what happened in Iraq was very hard for me because, you know, most of my time in, in war was in Iraq. I did serve some time in Afghanistan. He served some time in Iraq, but most of his time was served in Afghanistan. So. The fall of Afghanistan was harder for him than it was for me and, you know, maybe some other people as well. Um, so, kind of, I've kind of watched him deteriorate over the last few years. Uh, I tried to get him, you know, back on his feet. I tried to get him connected with, you know, various resources. I tried to get him a job, uh, but in, in discussing politics, he doesn't like my politics and considering he's a fellow PSYOP soldier, or I'm a former PSYOP soldier, um, he seems to not want to buy into the whole we are being PSYOP. He doesn't want to understand, doesn't want to believe that as smart as he is, he has been fooled. And a lot of really intelligent people have a problem with that. So I've spent the last year or so, you know, longer than that, trying to like bring him back into the fold. Um, and you know what, I I don't care about his politics. I'm not gonna stop being friends with somebody that's a good dude, good person, based off of them having politics that I disagree with. And it's a little frustrating to find that a brother in arms doesn't feel the same way about that. So, you know, we can argue back and forth, but if you're afraid to argue with people, whether or not you think they're being disingenuous or not, if you can't defend your, your stance, or you get upset that they're not believing what you're laying down, um, you're not presenting a good argument. You're not succeeding. You're just providing an emotional response. And I kind of saw that like, that's what he was doing. So I backed off and I let him kind of vent and, you know, I'm typically not the type to take insults laying down, but, you know, I, I let him have it, you know, it's what he needed. But, uh, yeah, finally he's, uh, he's blocked me on Facebook, he's blocked me on, uh, Instagram, or at least doesn't respond to me on Instagram, so it's hard to tell if someone's blocked you or they just ignore you. Um... And my, my chief concern here is he's going to go down that road. Um, and I just want to make sure that I have, if that happens, I hope it doesn't. Uh, I honestly, sincerely hope that doesn't. I hope that, uh, 
you know, whatever hardships he's gone through. I mean, he did kind of flush a, a, his military career for reasons that I'm not privy to. Um, you know, I hope he doesn't go down that road any further. I hope he doesn't join the 22 a day club. But I have a clean conscience because I've done everything I could do to bring him back, to give him that help, to get that, those services. But in these communications we've had back and forth via messenger, you know, he forgets that I tried to get him a job. He forgets that I reached out to him. He forgets that I very, you know, subtly, not so subtly, suggested he take advantage of some of the of these services. So there are other NCOs in my unit that have reached out to him as well. We've tried to take him from being a soldier who was about to get what we call you because anytime you don't show up to your unit for reserve obligations, you get a U. He was about to get U'd out. And we, we, we tried to bring him back in. We, we went to bat for him to the commander. We vouched for him. But he sees it as we did nothing. He sees it as we left him hanging. He sees it as we weren't there for him, as he went through these hardships that he had that he chose not to share with us. And it, it kind of makes me think that, you know, like with uh, wounded soldiers on the battlefield, with a physical wound, there are those that are going to die no matter what you do. There are those that are going to survive no matter what you do. But there's just a, a narrow sliver of those casualties that you can actually affect the outcome. If you provide the proper aid, they will survive. If you do nothing, they'll die. So I kind of wonder if this is, you know, do all of the soldiers out there that join that 22 a day club, um, do they, do they want to be saved? Can they be saved? Because I, I look at this guy and, like, I, I thank God he's still alive. I'm kind of mourning him tonight um, because, you know, <laughs> I'm dead to him now. Um, but I kind of, you know, I got to wonder and I got to think about these things. Uh, you know, maybe it's just not that we can save everyone. You know, uh... I did manage to talk to one of my buddies who did very come very close to committing suicide, to joining the 22 a day club. And, you know, we kind of had it back and forth, you know, essentially what it came down to is that he fully understood that there are other people who have gone through the same things. This is a different person, by the way. Uh, he fully understood that there's things that you know, other people understand what he's gone through. He understood that there's resources for him out there. But anytime he tried to take advantage of them, anytime he started to open up about these things, people looked at him like he had something wrong with him. He was pitied rather than looked at as the strong soldier that he envisioned himself, and honestly, that's how I see him as well. Um, even having been told what he, you know, he told me, I still see this other guy as a strong soldier. I would have him next to me on the battlefield if given the opportunity. So, you know, what do we do? I don't have an answer here, by the way. Spoiler alert. I, you know, I don't really have anything to offer this conversation apart from maybe a little bit of insight in finally getting an answer out of somebody who was very close. Um, you know, ultimately his, I, I don't recall how he put it, but essentially his discipline saw him through the day. And if you follow me on some of the other platforms, you see that I believe that discipline will always carry the day. So that's my term thrown in there, not his. Um, you know, so, how do we get these guys like that help? The ones that 
don't think that anyone will understand. I mean, having this, you know, this one guy tell me his problems I fully understood. You know, I've been there, I've seen that. It affected him differently. I don't, I don't look down upon him because of that. Uh, and then, you know, of course, doing did everything I could in my power for the other one, uh, who, you know, sees me as his enemy for trying to help him. Uh, so, you know, I don't have any answers today. I guess I'm just kind of using my platform here to spread awareness. You know, uh, there are any number of hotlines out there. We have a national hotline now. The number escapes me, but the love of God, like, Google that. It's, um, I don't know what the national suicide prevention hotline is off the top of my head. It's, uh, it's not 881, because that's, that's what you call before you dig every day. Uh, I think I got that wrong too. Anyway, God bless America. God bless my fellow veterans. God bless you for watching this video. Go ahead and hit the like button. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Every little bit for the channel helps. And ultimately, you know, you're not going to have someone in the White House that supports veterans and soldiers and Marines and other service members as much as I do because I've been there and I've done that. And hey, if you are a veteran out there and you're struggling and you need someone to talk to and you don't want to hit up these hotlines because you're afraid of confidentiality, you know, you have me on Facebook, you have me on Instagram, find me, send me a message. We can talk because I've been there, I understand, I've done that too. God bless you.